Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, question mark, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links in the description box below. Hey, I've been posting on social media lately too. I've been good about it in the past, haven't been so great, but I am getting better so you can count on more posts on social media. So what do I have going on for you for today? Today I'm bringing to you another one of those DIYs where I make something pretty cool out of popsicle sticks. These here are by Crafter Square. You can get them at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. I know Dollar Tree carries these. Every Dollar Tree's gotta carry these, fingers crossed. Today I'm bringing to you an adorable DIY using these that you are not gonna wanna miss. I absolutely love the way this DIY turned out and I have been having so much fun doing DIYs with these popsicle sticks. I feel like it was how it was when I started doing Jenga blocks and I was so inspired with DIYs with Dollar Tree's Jenga blocks and I came up with some really fun DIYs. I am feeling super inspired when it comes to popsicle sticks and today's DIY, I absolutely love it. I think you're gonna love it too. So I'm gonna quit my gabbing. Let's jump into it and let me show you what I have in mind for today's DIY using popsicle sticks. You're not gonna wanna miss this. So for both of these DIYs, yeah, I said both, you're getting two popsicle stick DIYs today. I'm gonna be using these shorter ones to save on time. Now, if you don't wanna buy these shorter ones from Walmart, you can use the Crafter Square ones and just simply cut them in half. It's gonna take you a bit of time because there's gonna be a lot that you need to cut in half. So you might just wanna bite the bullet and get these because you've got the nice rounded edges instead of square ones and it's just gonna look better. To glue all my sticks together, I'm gonna to use this super glue. This is a wood glue from guess where? From the Dollar Tree. And this works really great. It says it, it says professional strength for all types of wood. These popsicle sticks are wood, so it's gonna work. Professional strength. Now when gluing these together, I'm gonna to be as articulate as I can be. And hopefully you can just kind of watch what I'm doing because it's really hard to explain how to glue these popsicle sticks together in the shape in which I'm gluing them in. And the shape that I'm gluing them in is the same shape that I used when I did the flowers. And this is going to be the starter shape. And you can see where I've put my glue dots. Now taking some of the smaller ones, I'm gonna go ahead and place them just like so. And I'm gonna call these flower petals, but it's not a flower that we're doing today, but I'm gonna call it that because that, this was the shape we used. So I'm gonna make two of the flower petals that I made in the previous popsicle stick DIY. Isn't that fun? Two of them. Once we've got our two flower petals, triangle petals, uh, put together, I'm gonna go ahead and glue them together just like so. Now we only need two of these. We don't need six like we did for the flower. We just need two because wait until you see what I'm gonna do with this. Just wait. This is so stinking cute. You're gonna love it. I love it. This is something you can keep up all year round too. And so I think that as you do this DIY, you should either screenshot it or just kind of go along with me so you can follow the position and the shape that I'm making with my sticks. See, I'm really fidgeting with it because it has to be just so. Alrighty, so I am moving this project to a black background because I feel like it's just going to be easier for you to see the shape in which I'm putting these popsicle sticks in so there's less distraction, I guess, from my previous background. I honestly don't know how to explain how I'm putting these together. I will be using a variation of the smaller popsicle sticks with the longer ones. Because they're smaller, they're easier to angle to get the shape that I'm looking for. And so the shape of this, you're just gonna have to wait to see what it is. I'm sure some of you already know what it is, but oh my goodness, this is so fun. And this really is a DIY. I feel like that you can keep up year round if you wanted to, and I'll explain more of that later. But as I do this, just kind of follow along with me or take a screenshot of it after I get this first layer of popsicle sticks down. 
Now that my bunny's pretty well shaped and laid out, I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing my sticks together. What's great about this glue is it is repositionable up to about five minutes. And so as you're doing this, you do wanna move a bit quickly. So if you kinda need to move your popsicle sticks and shape them a bit better, you can. I don't suggest using hot glue because then you, you kinda lose that capability of being able to move your sticks around before the glue dries. Another tip that I will give you is when you're placing your sticks, you kind of want to go every other stick, like above sticks and then below sticks, if that makes any sense. And you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. This stick here is on top, while this stick here is on the bottom. You don't want to kind of overlap them as you're doing it down, because then when you go to layer this and stack it, it's not going to stack correctly. It's going to stack unevenly. So as you're doing it, I would definitely uh, place your sticks the way I'm placing it here. And so here, I'm just going to insert this so that way if you want to go ahead and screenshot this on your phone or your ipad you can do that and then you can use this as a reference and here's the time consuming but fun part of stacking these now i'm going to stack this about nine to ten high i guess i should say there will be nine to ten layers and you can see as i'm doing it i'm doing all the ones that are going to go on top first where the sticks are even and then the next layer will be the ones that are offset a bit and i know that seems a little confusing and like i said this is one of those diys that's really hard to articulate how i'm placing the sticks but you'll see as i'm doing it where i put my glue dots and i found that if i put my glue all the way around the bunny first and then i used my sticks and placed my sticks it kind of moved it along a bit quicker and so you can see that when I place the next stick, I'm placing it on two sticks that are level there. And now it's just made another area that I can now place my next row of sticks on. And so, yeah, I'm probably making this way more compu complicated. <laughs> Come on, Kelly, learn how to talk um, than it really is. But, you know, it's kind of important that you do it that way because I did initially make the mistake of not setting that first um, set of sticks correctly. And when I layered it, it just did not come out as nice as it could have, as this one's going to. So go ahead and pop in a movie, watch Lifetime, watch Hallmark, watch a good documentary. There's some good ones on Netflix right now and start layering away. And before you know it, uh, you'll be done placing all your popsicle sticks. How stinking cute is this bunny? Is this not just the coolest thing ever? I love these. I think that these are so fun. And I think, again, like I said, this is a decor piece based on how you decorate it that can be left up year round. Of course, you know I'm going to paint this with some Waverly antique wax because why would I paint this bunny white? It's not gonna match my decor. I want that rustic feel. And I feel like because this is made out of wood, adding this antique wax to it is really gonna just give it that rustic feel that I love. If you wanna paint this white, I say paint it white. If you wanna paint it pink, paint it pink. This would be adorable on a bedroom wall in any color. Oh my goodness, endless possibilities. Is it easy to paint? Not super easy, but if you use a thicker brush like I'm doing here and you just kind of go along the edges, you're going to get all of those sticks painted. I, I don't suggest painting this one by one, the sticks, before you put it together because then you're really going to be here forever and it's going to take you longer to paint each individual stick than it is if you just paint it like this once it's together because I know somebody's going to say, well, why didn't you just paint the sticks individually before you glued them? Because then I'd be sitting here for three hours painting 300 sticks versus the five minutes it took me to paint it like this. And it turned out great, I promise. Watch, you'll see. 
See, I told you, would you look at how gorgeous this is. It, it's very sturdy. Can you tell I wanted to show you that? Want to make sure, sturdy little piece here. What am I going to do with this? I'm going to take some Mod Podge, any Mod Podge will do, and I'm going to just place some right along the back side. Now the back side of the bunny is going to be whichever side you, I guess, is not going to be the, how do I want to say that? The, the back side of this bunny is going to be dependent on which way you want your bunny to face. Spit it out, Kelly. So if you want your bunny to face this way, then you're going to use the other side as the back side. If you want your bunny to face the other way, this is the side you're going to use for the back side. This is my back side. Aren't you glad we had that talk? So you're going to put a good amount of Mod Podge on this and um, you're just going to outline the popsicle sticks with it. And to the back of this bunny, yep, I'm adding some of this Emma and Myla fabric. Can I just tell you that I was walking through Walmart the other day and I always browse the fabric. I saw that they were selling this fabric by the yard. So guess what I bought? I bought a few yards of each because I'm not gonna lie, I'm obsessed. Hope you all don't get sick of this fabric because I just can't get sick of it. I'm gonna go ahead and place it face up the fabric and I'm going to flip my bunny side down, Mod Podge side down, and I'm going to place it on my fabric. See where I'm going with this? Can you tell this is going to look cool? Look at how gorgeous that looks. I love this. Now this is versatile. You can use any fabric you want. You can paint this white. You can use a glitter fabric. You can use a rhinestone fabric. You can use, I, I don't know, is there a rhinestone fabric? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, again, too much coffee. Once I've got the fabric good and stuck, I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and I am going to go back over the outline with some Mod Podge, just really getting it adhered onto the back. And then I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna let it dry. I'm doing this at about 10 o'clock at night, so I'm gonna go to bed, I'm gonna wake up, and I'm gonna finish this project off in the morning. Good night. So, yep, it is good and dry. It is the next day. I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife or razor and I'm going to just cut off the excess fabric using the popsicle sticks as a guide and you can see that because the Mod Podge had stiffened that um, it's giving us a nice clean cut. Our fabric isn't going to fray and this is going to look amazing. This really is the easier way to do it. And again, I'll show you in the next DIY. Why? DIY why? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I seriously, somebody tell me to stop. Okay, I, I can't. This is me. If I'm being honest, this is Kelly in real life. And so Kelly in real life is now being translated into my voiceovers, because why not? Now you're seeing Kelly in real life, only in a voiceover real life. Okay, I'm gonna stop. Guess what I'm gonna add to this bunny? I'm gonna add one of my twine bows that is several layers thick, because by doing that, it really gives the bow some substance, it adds to it, it makes it not look so flimsy. I mean, think about it, if we use just one strand of twine, it would look terrible. We need to add several strands, so we thicken it up and give it some substance, give it a nice thick bow look to it, because one strand just isn't enough. The more twine, the better. And I think this here bow should go up top, right here. I don't know, I'm not feeling it. Something is missing, I don't like it. No, no, this is not gonna work. Okay, I know what this needs. It needs more twine. So we're gonna add some twine and wrap it around the ear and hopefully that will do the trick. And so I'm just gonna wrap it several times until I have the thickness that I am happy with. More twine is always better, right? So yeah, I totally hated how low that was. Let's rewind and redo. This twine needs to go higher up on the ear because lower just did not look right. It wasn't proportioned, so went ahead and scraped off the hot glue and we're going higher up with this twine. And I'm gonna glue my bow right here to this. I am happy now, this looks way better. Wait a minute, we can't have a bunny without a tail. And a white tail just isn't gonna work for this. This bunny needs a twine tail. So I'm gonna wrap some twine around my fingers and I'm gonna make a twine pom-pom tail. Cause why not? Have I said more twine makes it better? 
the more twine the better. There we go, I said it again in case they haven't said it enough this video. You're gonna wanna wrap a lot of twine around your fingers because we want a nice full tail. And to get a nice full tail, you need a lot of twine. How many times can I say twine? Somebody tell me. This tail needs a bit of a haircut and so just by pinching it together, I'm gonna trim it up because we can't have our bunny with a messy tail. It's gotta have a cute tail because it's a cute bunny. Cute tail to go with a cute bunny. Just by pinching it together just like this, you see what I'm doing. It's gonna make it look cute. And this twine tail is going right here on the bunny's bum. Oh my goodness. Seriously, this is the perfect finishing touch to this rustic bunny. It couldn't have a yarn tail or a white tail because then it just wouldn't be rustic. But if you paint your bunny white, I definitely go with white or pink or yellow, blue, green, whatever color suits you. I say get creative and make it your own. That's what I did. This may be a piece I keep up all year. Yep, we still got one more to go. So if you like these popsicle stick DIYs, here's another one that I think you're gonna love. This one's versatile too. It can be done to suit any decor style. Guess what shape we're starting off with? That good old flower petal shape again. We're gonna need three of these. Can you guess what I'm making this time? Now we're gonna take them all and glue them together just like you see me doing here. And I'm sure now you can guess what it is I am doing. The funny thing is, is that when I initially did this flower DIY, as I was putting the flower together, I started feeling like, oh my goodness, I need to make a cross out of this. This would be a beautiful cross. And it was so hard for me not to tell you all that I had already made a cross and a bunny. And so if I'm being completely honest, when I first started this, I did the bunny first. And when I was doing the bunny ears, that's when it hit me, oh my goodness, this would be an adorable flower. I need to make a flower and post that first. And then as I was doing the flower, that's when it hit me, I need to make a cross out of this. And look at that, because as I was putting the flower together, I didn't know how to space the petals. And so it started looking like a cross. And that's when I was like, okay, I need to do a cross too. And so, yeah, so many of you already caught on to what I was doing in the first. DIY, but I knew you weren't gonna catch on to the bunny. And so I was super excited to bring that to you because I think that bunny is amazing. But wait until you see the fabric that I use on this cross and how amazing this cross looks when it's done. Sorry, I did not show the bottom part of this being done, but you can see here how I set it up. And so this here is the base of our cross. Again, you can screenshot this and use it as a reference. Now it's time to build it up and I'm gonna build it up just as I did the bunny and I'm gonna go about nine to 10 popsicle sticks high just because I feel like that's a nice depth that gives it enough of that dimension that I'm looking for. If you wanna go thicker, you can. It's just gonna take you a bit longer. It's gonna take you more popsicle sticks. I wanna say that with the bunny and with the cross, I used one bag each of the smaller popsicle sticks. And again, I did get those smaller ones at Walmart because there was just too many that I was gonna need to cut to cut them. And so I felt like just for convenience, this was the quickest, easiest route to go. But if you got time, I say cut and sand, cut and sand. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, it is the middle of the night and that's why the lighting's off. I'm one of those people that if I can't sleep, I will go in my new craft room oh, and I will craft and finish some videos. And so that's what I'm doing here. I figured I might as well just get up and stain this and let it dry. And if I'm tired, I'll go back to bed after I stain it. Who else does that? I also do laundry that way. Does anybody else do laundry that way? Like you start a load before you go to bed and then maybe you wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and then I just think like, heck, I'm gonna go stick it in the dryer so that way it's dry when I wake up. <laughs> who else does that? Or am I just somebody who's just quirky like that? I don't know. That's what I do. Fun facts about Kelly. I originally was gonna go with this fabric here, my favorite, the Emma and Miley fabric, until mm -hmm, I saw this fabric here. Oh my goodness, this spring truck. Oh, this is amazing. I saw this at Walmart. It is the pre-cut fabric yard. How do you pass this up? Somebody tell me. 
You're walking through Walmart, you see this, it's like a neon light just flashing at me. Kelly, come by me, you need me in your life. And that's what this fabric was saying to me, it was speaking to me. And so I bought a couple yards of it. I am loving it. This is a yard or a fabric that, I'm saying a yard, this is a fabric that you can keep up all year round. It's got the amazing spring flowers on it. And so I just love it. And so that's what I decided to do this cross in. Now this cross, I decided to switch it up and try and use some hot glue because guess what? I was impatient and didn't want to wait a few hours for the Mod Podge to dry. You can't stick this in the oven because it's probably going to fall apart in the oven. It's going to soften up that glue. Didn't want to do that. And so I tried to use hot glue. I will tell you that if I had it to do differently, I would go back and do the Mod Podge because I could not cut the fabric off with a straight edge razor or an X-Acto knife because it wasn't stiff because the Mod Podge stiffens the fabric and in turn, that makes it easy to cut through. And you can't really cut through fabric easily with a razor or an X-Acto knife. And so that's what I get for being impatient. My cuts weren't as clean as I wanted them to be because I had to use scissors. And so, yeah, don't use hot glue. Just be patient and do it at night and you'll have a better outcome. And if you're not, then you're gonna have to cut it. And it still turned out great. Let's go take a look. Oh wait, no, we're not gonna take a look yet. I have to finish this off. And guess what I'm gonna finish it off with? Yep, I'm gonna finish it off in the center with one of my handmade twine flowers. If you have not seen that video, I have a very old one that I will link in the description box below and on the end screen. And I thought that this was the perfect finishing touch to the center of this cross. And I gotta tell you, I couldn't be happier with it. Again, I love this fabric. Let's go take a look at it. I told you, I am in love with this bunny. I love it so much that I wanna keep it out all year. I am obsessed with that Emma and Myla fabric. I think this DIY just screams everything that I love. It's got the wood, it's got the Waverly wax, it's got that Emma and Myla fabric, and it is farmhouse and rustic, and it's perfect, I love it. I love DIYs like that, it just screams me. Now keep in mind, if the rustic feel isn't for you, Use some paint, go with a white, go with a cream, do it to suit your decor, and I guarantee it's gonna have the same amazing outcome. I hope you all enjoyed today's bunny DIY that I made out of popsicle sticks. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, and let's get this video to, you guessed it, 5,000 likes, because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow, and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive, please, and bye.